Okay. So um, I am going to go ahead and share some slides with you. And everybody on my team makes fun of me because I have the technology skills of someone like at least three times my age. So there's an issue. Oh, you know what? I'm doing it wrong. Hang on one second. There. Okay. okay, can everybody see those slides? Yep, okay. great, thanks everybody. So today we're gonna to talk about gifts anyone can make. And I wanna say thank you right out of the gate just for joining us today. I mean, the fact that you're considering this type of gift at all is incredibly generous of you and um, says a lot about how much you love this place. So thank you for spending some time for uh, time with us today. This is intended to be a presentation that's a broad overview of giving options. Um, so we will run through some of the options um, with the intention of doing a deeper dive on some of these in a future virtual event like this. So this is really just intended to sort of get the wheels spinning for you and to give you some idea of the options that are available to you. So with that in mind, our agenda for the next hour, I'm going to leave time for questions, certainly, is um, to talk about what those giving options are, why they're important from both Kenyon's perspective and yours, who makes these kinds of gifts, uh, I'm going to share some frequently asked questions that I hear often from folks um, in case they're a question that you already have. And then, like I said, we will leave time for your questions um, with the caveat that <laughs> these answers do not constitute legal advice. I am not a JD. Um, please seek qualified counsel if you have questions um, or as one of my favorite webinar series says, this is a free webinar. Please don't sue us. So we're going to start with um, what is planned giving? I think in most people's minds, planned giving means gifts through wills and trusts. And that is definitely true, um, that that makes up a big part of my job. But that's not exclusively true. Um, there are many, many other assets that folks use to make planned gifts to Kenyon. Some of those include stocks, bonds, uh, business interests, donor advised funds, cryptocurrency, Retirement assets is one we're going to spend a little bit more time on because they apply to just so many people. Real estate and land can be used for philanthropic gifts. Life insurance is an option that some people use. And then there's also a special kind of gift called a life income gift or a split interest gift. Those arrangements um, allow the donor to and some of their beneficiaries to receive income. And then there's a portion that's allocated to Kenyan as a gift. So those are charitable gift annuities and charitable trusts. Um, so we do have those as options at Kenyan. Uh, I'm part of a national group of folks that do this kind of work, this plain giving work, and we post on a listserv all the time. And so I have seen on these listservs artwork and collectibles or something that certainly Kenyon sees those. But I've also seen folks asking about the tax treatment of a wine collection or livestock, depending on where they're located, or commodity futures. So when we say that it really you can gift anything other than cash, um, of course, you can gift cash. I shouldn't say that, but it's not the purview of plain giving. Um, we really mean it, but please, please do not call me and try and donate a cow because I don't uh, necessarily know that that's something I want to personally figure out. Uh, I also promised that in addition to telling you what plan giving was, that we would talk a little bit about why it's important to Kenyon. So what I'm showing on my screen right now is a pie chart that talks about where wealth lies in the United States. So you can see that the biggest pieces of this pie are coming from retirement plans at 26%, publicly traded stocks and bonds are also 26%, and real estate is about 24%. So those three different types of assets constitute three quarters of the wealth in the United States. A smaller percentage at 12 is privately held businesses, and cash and cash equivalents are also 12%. So hopefully, um, what you can see from this is that if we are only asking donors to consider using cash to make gifts, 
we are asking for a, the smallest piece of the pie, frankly. So it is really important that we meet donors where they are and understand that many other assets can be used to um, make an incredible philanthropic gifts for Kenyan. The other really important thing about plan gifts at Kenyon, uh, the last two campaigns that we've had, over 20% of what we've raised in total for the campaign has come from plan gifts. And what do we do with that? We, uh, as you can see, this pie chart is showing that 55% of plan gifts at Kenyon are allocated to scholarships, about 30% go to capital projects. 13% go to academic programs, whether that's through a major or some of the broader um, things like travel embedded courses or things like that that um, come out of the academic division. And then the operating budget and the general endowment also do receive support through plan gifts. And these allocations can be either donor directed or directed by the board of trustees. Now, from a donor's perspective, why are these gifts important? For these are things that I've heard from donors directly. So for them, for some people, it affirms how important Kenyon is to them and helps to provide for the future of the college. It also allows donors to make a more significant gift than they could or would feel comfortable doing during their lifetime. It's a good example for children, grandchildren, and other heirs that they think about organizations or societal needs beyond just their own personal needs. And it also solves problems. Now I'm putting problems in air quotes um, because I'm going to tell some stories of real donor um, scenarios that I've worked with. Now I've changed their names and their class years to sort of protect their anonymity, but um, this gives you an idea of how these, these gifts can be helpful to you. So this first one, Katie from the class of 2012 got a new job and added Kenyon as a 5% beneficiary on her retirement account. So while she felt like the, her family needed the majority of her assets, she felt like they could do without 5% and she felt really good about making a gift to Kenyon that way. We're gonna put a pin in this particular uh, type of gift and talk about it again later on. But for now, let's move through some different scenarios. Alex from the class of 2006 has young children and he was writing a will for the first time. So he included a specific designation of $25,000 with plans to revise later. So in his case, he gave a specific dollar amount. You will see some other folks who have chosen to approach those gifts differently, even if they're using the same mechanism of a will. Mike from the class of 1984 took out a life insurance policy on himself and made Kenyon the 100% beneficiary. So the way that arrangement works, Mike pays the annual premium, which is tax deductible. And then the ultimate gift that Kenyon will realize when he passes away will be many times what he pays in premiums. So that was an arrangement he could afford to make the premiums, but maybe wouldn't have been able to make such a significant gift without using that vehicle. Al is actually a parent um, of an alumnus who graduated in the class of 97, an alumna actually in that case. He has two out-of-state children who don't want his home. So he's leaving it to Kenyon through his trust. So you can see this is sort of different than what we did before. Someone left a, Alex left a specific dollar amount. Al is leaving a specific asset. So he's saying the proceeds from the sale of my house will go to Kenyon um, and benefit Studio Arts, but the remainder of his assets will go to his children and grandchildren. Donald from the class of 72 uh, has a challenging health diagnosis. So he's unsure about what his future healthcare expenses will be, but he wanted to do something for Kenyon as part of his 50th reunion. So in his case, he made Kenyon the beneficiary, remainder beneficiary of his estate after making specific distributions for his loved ones. So he did the exact opposite of Alex. He said, you know, he doesn't have any children. So he said, I want this nephew to get this amount, this niece to get this amount. And then if there's anything left, it will go to Kenyon. So that helps to take into account if he has um, significant healthcare expenses, then um, his primary focus is on his family, but that's a way that he can make a, make a gift to Kenyon. Mark from the class of 66 has to take his required minimum distribution from his retirement accounts annually, but he doesn't need the income. His house is paid off. He doesn't have a lot of debt or anything like that. Um, so if he withdraws the required minimum distribution, um, 
all he has to do is pay taxes on that income. And he didn't really like the idea of that. So he started an endowed scholarship using his required minimum distribution. In that case, you call your financial advisor or Vanguard or whomever holds your retirement um, assets. They write a check directly to Kenyon, which is called a Qualified Charitable Distribution or QCD. So we established the scholarship now while he's alive. He can see the impact of that gift. Uh, and then he plans to add to it later on through his estate. Sam from the class of 59 uh, owns a business that he built from the ground up. He wants to sell it, but because of the low basis um, in the business and the land, he will face significant capital gains tax. So in Sam's case, he can put some of his business assets into a charitable trust and receive an income for the rest of his life from those assets while sheltering them from the tax liability that he would otherwise owe. Then the remainder passes to Kenyon after he passes away. Now, Robert also used a charitable trust for a very different reason. Uh, he's in the class of 55. He had significant wealth. He didn't want to disinherit his kids, um, but of the three, one of them really wasn't very good with money. So he didn't want to leave them a significant amount of money that they frankly wouldn't manage uh, very responsibly. So he established charitable remainder trusts for each child where they receive an income every year without being able to access the principal. And then the remainder comes to Kenyon after they pass away. I have uh, three kids myself. I don't know if anybody on screen has kids. Mine are only seven, four, and two, but I could see myself needing this kind of arrangement with my four-year-old. He's a little nuts. So we'll see if I end up needing that later on. So I promised you we were gonna spend a little extra time on gifts of retirement assets. And one thing I wanted to point out is first and foremost, we want gifts of retirement assets. It, just recently, I have heard from two separate alums um, that their financial advisor let them know like, oh, you shouldn't leave a charitable gift using your retirement assets because they're too complicated for the charities to be able to collect them. This is, if you'll let me get on a soapbox for one second, this is really frustrating because the only reason that it's at all um, difficult for charities to collect gifts using retirement assets is because of uh, specific steps that these organizations have put in place. So they make it hard on us and then they tell folks that it's too hard for them to collect. So that's really, really frustrating. Um, in reality, it's one of the easiest gifts that you can make um, from your perspective to allocate Kenyon or any other charity um, as a beneficiary in your retirement accounts, all you have to do is log in to Vanguard or Fidelity or TIA, CREF, and select beneficiaries. And then you can type a specific percentage that will come to Kenyon. So it's free for you. It's easy. You don't need help from anyone else to be able to do it. Um, and we certainly have the professional staff to be able to collect those gifts. So please don't worry about that. If that's something, I think financial advisors by and large are certainly well-meaning and they think that they're doing us a favor when in reality, these are really great opportunities for people to make really impactful gifts at Kenyon. In addition, at the federal level, um, many inherited assets receive favorable tax treatment. I think it's the estate tax exemption at the federal level this year is something like 13.6 million or something like that. So if you are part of the 99% of the world that uh, has assets less than $13 million, they're not going to face federal estate tax. And additional assets like stocks and things like that um, receive a step up in basis. So there's lots of positive from a tax standpoint, um, treatments that will come through your estate. But retirement assets, conversely, face some of the most severe tax treatments. The um, tax treatment remains the same as the original account. So if you established a Roth IRA and you give it away, well, let me take a step back. If you established a Roth IRA, you paid taxes on those assets when you put it into the account. So any of your heirs won't pay taxes on it. You've already paid the taxes. But the majority um, of retirement assets are in pre-tax accounts, whether it came from your employer or any other account that you have established. In that case, your heirs, other than spouses don't have to pay tax on that, and there are some special exemptions around children and things like that. But by and large, um, if you have sort of a traditional situation and your kids are gonna inherit your, your retirement accounts, they will be taxed at their ordinary income tax rate. So if you have really successful children, 
you know, their tax rate is going to be what is owed to the government. And that can be like a third in some cases versus Kenyan will have zero tax liability in receiving those assets. So it's a really powerful way. If you intend to leave a gift to charity, your retirement assets are really the first thing that you should look at both from their perspective um, and yours. So some of the frequently asked questions that I get in working directly with donors is, um, do I have to give my entire estate to Kenyan? The first time I heard this one, I about fell out of my chair because it would have never occurred to me that that was some on someone's mind. Um, and so immersed in all these different types of uh, arrangements that it just wouldn't have occurred to me. So if this was something that you thought of, certainly not. You can absolutely give a, a portion of your estate to Kenyan um, or a portion of a specific asset even. So don't worry that if you give something to us, that means that everything has to come to us. The other big one I hear is what if, what if I face significant healthcare expenses or I need to go into assisted living? Um, you know, there's any number of scenarios like that. Many, many plan gifts are revocable. So don't worry. You can tell me, you know, on February 21st, I intend to make this gift but we know that you don't have a crystal ball, that you don't know what's coming. So if your plans need to change later, we can absolutely just update our records and you can change that gift however you need to. What if I want a gift a particular asset, but I still want income from that asset? So that is an option that um, certainly applies to those who own a small business, but it could also be from like, investments, for example. So we have a donor who owns um, a couple of rental properties as an investment. And he said to me, could I gift those? And he was sort of toying with it because he's kind of done being a landlord, but he really likes the income stream that comes from them. Well, in his case, we can put those homes in a trust. We will sell them and the proceeds stay in the trust. So from that um, arrangement, they're again sheltered from the tax liability that he'd otherwise pay, but then he can continue to receive income from those assets until he passes away and he's not going to get any calls about the water heater anymore. So that's a great opportunity for folks to think about. And then when he passes away and no longer needs those assets, the remainder in the trust will come to Kenyon for the purpose that he specified. That arrangement can be made with lots of different assets. What if I want to designate my plan gift to something specific, or what if I don't? Either of those scenarios are perfectly fine. We have folks who say, I want to give a gift to this major or to create a scholarship, and that's great. We'd love to work with you on uh, the specific language, so we make sure that it comes to us um, in a way that we can administer. But if you don't have something specific in mind, please don't let that be an obstacle. We have tons of people who don't specify their gift and they leave it up to to Kenyon to decide how it's best used. Now, the power of those gifts really became clear for us, I would say, during COVID, because as you can imagine, none of us predicted COVID. We certainly never expected the kinds of um, expenses that came with that when students had to move out and we had to ship their things or whatever it might be. Um, undesignated plan gifts really became a powerful source of revenue for us in those situations. So you can imagine how that could, um, that scenario could be repeated many times over. So we specifically, we really appreciate unrestricted plan gifts. Uh, and the final one is I'm not old. Why should I consider plan giving? Um, I was doing a webinar, like a professional development type webinar, and the speaker was from the state of Maryland. And she was saying that she didn't have a will, even though she was an attorney and she just hadn't gotten around to it. And then she learned that in Maryland, if you die without a will, um, your assets actually go to your parents, not your children. Well, that um, really motivated her to make a gift because she was actually estranged from her parents and had been raised by her grandmother. So she really wanted to make sure that her assets went where she wanted them to go. Now, different states are going to have different laws, and that may not be the case in your state. But I think the point that you should decide where your assets go or how they're best put to use um, is a powerful one. So even if it can be a little bit cumbersome to think about how to do some of these things, it's really probably in your best interests. 
For folks that do decide to make a planned gift for Kenyon, um, we include them in our George Wharton Marriott Society. I know there are some of you on the call now that um, are members of our Marriott Society, so I wanna say thank you so much for your investment in the college. Um, currently, we have over 550 alumni, parents, and friends that have included provisions for Kenyon. We know that there are more um, that also have included us but haven't yet told us. Um, every single year, we receive notification, particularly from estates, um, where some where an attorney or uh, advisor reaches out and said, this person had a provision for you in their estate. And that's wonderful. We want to um, work with you, though, to discuss what we can accomplish with your philanthropic goals. Even though it doesn't happen often, uh, we can find ourselves in the uncomfortable situation where, say, for instance, you're working with an attorney and you say, I really want to make a gift to my athletic team at Kenyon. I want to create a scholarship for a student athlete. And you both write that up and send it to us. And then we receive notification and uh in the future when you've passed away that you've made this provision. Well, unfortunately, the NCAA regulations are that we cannot give scholarships to student athletes. In that case, we would have to disclaim the gift or hopefully work with the advisor um, to make some kind of modification that still honors your intent, um, but is legal for us to administer. That's the worst case scenario for us. Um, I talked with a donor last week who said, I don't want to sign any paperwork with Kenyon. I, you know, I don't want there to be any fighting over my estate. That's totally fine. We're happy to work with you in whatever way makes sense for you, but we'd love to have the opportunity to work with you on the criteria so we make sure it's something that we can actually award and use. And certainly we want to, we want to be able to count and recognize your gener generosity to the extent that you're comfortable. I hear, especially from Kenyan alumni, um, I don't need recognition for this gift. And we totally understand that. But one of the benefits of you sharing this and becoming a member of our George Wharton Marriott Society is to help inspire other people to make these kinds of gifts. So sometimes they'll see, you know, hey, this person has kids or this person, you know, worked a job like mine and they're making a gift, maybe I can too. And that's another really powerful way that you can support the work that we're doing at Kenyon. This is a copy of what our confirmation form looks like. You can see it's a one page document. It's really simple. It's asking what's the document type, a will or a trust. We have a different version of this for retirement accounts, but otherwise it's pretty much the same thing. And it's just asking when the commitment occurs. Um, it's asking for an estimate of the gift knowing again full well that you can't know what's going to happen, that it may change over time. And then it's asking if you have any restrictions on how this gift is to be used. So it's a really simple form. I have heard time and time again, like, oh, had I known it was this easy, I would have talked to you about it sooner. So I wanted to just put it out there. This is all that we're asking of you. Um, and if you're comfortable doing it, it makes uh, a big difference at Kenyon and what we can anticipate doing. So um, if you need to reach out to me, feel free. The puns aren't going to get any better. Where there's a will, uh, there's a way for you to support Kenyon with a planned gift, whether now or through your estate. Um, I want to make sure I make time for questions like I promised. I'll leave this up for one second, and then I will uh, take it down so that I can see you all a little bit better. But here's my contact information if you want to reach out uh, later on. Stop sharing. And bring this over here. Okay. So I don't think I see any questions in the chat. So I'm happy to take them live or you can pop them in the chat if you like, whether about anything I've presented um, just now or if you've um, talked to an advisor already, have questions, something you've read online, anything like that, I'm happy to take. try that again. Thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate you. Um, 
looking into these kind of gift options. And if you have questions later on, you think of something or you want to chat offline, please know I'm happy to talk with you. What's all the things that like the sales guys say, like um, no commitment required or whatever. <laughs> Don't think I'm going to stalk you for the rest of your life if you reach out. It's certainly my pleasure to help talk with folks about um, what option might make sense for you. Thank you.